Hi there and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome to my YouTube channel if it's your first time here and you are here with another episode of Paint and Mystery. Before we go on, there is a creative school, what you call it, the kindergarten school thing, just next door to us. And today they are being particularly noisy. So if you hear children screaming, I'm sorry, can't do anything about it. Anyway, today we're doing things a bit differently. Today I'm not going to be doing a painting, I'm going to be doing my bullet journal setup. I thought why not combine it? It's like art and mystery. So I'm going to be doing my bullet journal setup while I tell you about a mystery, piece of history, conspiracy theory, true crime, whatever. Today I thought with all of this alien business going on in the news, you know, America saying aliens are real, um, I thought this would be a good time to revisit the Roswell crash. You know the infamous Roswell UFO crash. Let's get into the video. So back in 1947 there was in a few months more than 300 UFO sightings so it was a busy time apparently for the alien people. Are they people? Alien beings. I don't want to offend the aliens. I don't know. Alien things. <laughs> Whatever, lots of sightings. So the most famous of this alien slash UFO slash flying saucer cases was most certainly the Roswell incident. One thing everyone can agree on, whether they are a believer of the aliens or not a believer, is that something most definitely crashed somewhere before June 14th of 1947. Something crashed on the Foster Ranch. That is, there's no debate on that. It is what crashed? That is the question. So this is the chain of events of what happened, okay? On July 4th, a rancher named Mac Brazel, Brazel, I think it's Brazel, something crashes on his ranch and he takes the debris a couple of days later and he goes to the local sheriff. Now this local sheriff's name was George Wilcox. So he goes out, he takes the debris, he's like, Mr. Wilcox, what the f is this? Can, can we just sort this business out? Mr. Wilcox then contacts the US Air Force Colonel Butch. I'm putting my phone on silent, but someone else's in the house is going. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Um, Mr. Wilcox then contacts a US Air Force Colonel named Butch Blanchard, okay, and he then contacts his superior. This is a whole lot of business of this one contacting this one, this one contacting this one. Bureaucracy. Is that the word? I think that's the word. Bureaucracy. Hello, this is Editing Sammy here. Hi. I'm busy editing this video and I realized that a couple of times I said colonel instead of colonel. I don't know why. I know it's colonel. Then why do you say colonel? I don't know. Okay? Maybe talk to whoever invented the English language and decided to spell colonel, colonel. Anyway, don't go in the comments, comments saying, Sammy, you're stupid. I know. Alright? <laughs> anyway, back to the video. Wilcox then contacts a US Air Force colonel named Butch Blanchard, you know, he was a colonel there at the Roswell Army Airfield thingamabob. So Colonel Blanchard then contacts his superior, General Roger W. Ramsey, because everyone needs to contact their superiors and then they have to contact their superiors. No wonder there's misinformation. Then General Ramsey orders Major Jesse Marcel to go and investigate this scene and to recover some of the debris. You know, that is the order he gives. Where's my... Anyway. So Major Jesse Marcel then goes to do his investigation. He goes on to check it out, investigate, and he then goes back and he briefs Colonel Butch Blanchard on what he saw and about the site visit. On July 8, Colonel Blanchard then orders Jesse to release a statement, to do like a press release and say that they believe they have a flying saucer in their possession. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a US colonel saying, do that. 
Ta almost immediately the Roswell Daily Records runs a story in the newspaper because this is most now big news um, with a headline that reads, I'm going to quote this one for you. Roswell Army Airfield captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. That is the headline. Can you imagine? So now this story is running in the news. It's on the newspapers. Everyone is talking about it. But on the same day, same day, the Air Force changes their story. So General Roger Ramsey, he um, orders that the remains be taken with him to Fort Worth in Texas so that he can investigate it himself, you know. So him, his staff and the weather officer concludes that the remains that they found was of a weather balloon. They then issue a new press release and they release a photo of them sitting with the weather balloon. I'll insert the photo here so you can see. Um, and that is it. That is it for the new story. No, it's not a flying saucer as we initially told you. It's actually a weather balloon. Because, you know, they look the same. To a, to a person who goes to the crash site, who's a military expert, and he goes, it's very easy to... to um, you know, think that a weather balloon is an alien spacecraft. I don't know. So the next day, the same newspaper, the Roswell Daily Record, whatever, they run a new story and the headline reads, um, a rust rancher who located saucer is sorry that he told about it. That is what the headline reads. So Brazel is now the rancher dude. He um, revealed that the supposed alien wreckage was merely rubber strips, tin foil, a rather thick, tough paper and sticks. So he was, um, you know, he was mistaken the first time. It was just tin foil and sticks and, you know, the debris of a weather balloon. I was just mistaken. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's the gist of the story. So, now that is the end. they like, no, it's a weather balloon. Yes, the proof. What, what? Everyone, please forget about it now and move on. That did not last long, though. So, in 1978, a nuclear physicist and a UFO, um, what do you call them, researcher, he started to investigate the story and he interviewed um, Jesse Marcel, he was the one, the officer who um, initially went to the crash site to investigate it. You remember that one? The one who said, listen, this is alien business. He was the one who assessed the wreckage. Friedman decided to interview him. So in the interview, he revealed that he believes that the remains that he found was definitively not of a weather balloon. And I'm going to read you his entire quote, just so that you can... You can hear what he was saying in this interview. All right. He said about the metal that was found on the crash site, and I quote, It felt like you had nothing in your hands. It wasn't any thicker than the foil out of a pack of cigarettes. But the thing about it that got me is that you couldn't even bend it. You couldn't dent it. Even a sl sledgehammer would bounce off it. I knew that I had never seen anything like that before. It was not anything from this earth. That I'm quite sure of. Being an intelligence officer, I was familiar with just about all materials used in aircraft and or air travel. This was nothing like that. It could not have been. So this was the quote from the guy who first went to, to um, investigate the wreckage. He was like, this is no weather balloon. I'm no stupid. I'm a military Officer, and um, this is not a bloody weather balloon. So after this, Friedman interviewed even more witnesses, um, civilians and uh, military people, and he concluded that there had definitely been a cover-up, a massive cover-up, and he called it a cosmic water guide, which isn't that a cool description? Cosmic water guide. I like that. <laughs> um. He said that this cover-up includes the crash site materials, spacecraft, and even alien bodies that was found on the scene. 
what even is happening? So with that, let's get into two of the main theories. Well, there's just two theories. Theories, Theory number one, there's no cover-up and they've been telling the truth. Theory number two, there is a cover-up. UFO, alien. Woo! Okay. First theory. Um, the events at Roswell went just as reported. There's no cover-up. They were telling the truth. It was a weather balloon. Well, in 1994, the Air Force released a statement saying that there, ha there was, in fact, a cover-up. They admitted it. There was a cover-up, um, but the, the cover-up wasn't about aliens, no. The cover-up was about a special, top-secret weather balloon. Okay, so yes, it was a weather balloon, but it was a top-secret one from an operation, like a top-secret military operation, you know? This operation was called Project Mogul, all with the cool names. This was like a fancy top secret weather balloon that was part of Project Mogul. So basically they designed a very interesting and cool weather balloon that the main purpose of this weather balloon was to listen so that it can detect if there's like, um, what do you call it, nuclear business going on in Russia because this was Cold War times, right? So this special weather balloon was deployed into the air so that it can hear if there's like nuclear testing and stuff going on in Russia. And this was in fact what crashed. And the reason I covered it up was for your protection. It wasn't like to keep you in the dark about aliens. No, no. Mm -mm. Not in this house. We were just protecting you. You know? So that was now the official statement. They admitted there was a cover up. But it was a nice cover-up, not the ugly one. Then in 1992, they basically officially closed the case. They released statements saying case closed and the story about what about the alien bodies that was reported on? What about that? They said, you know what, years prior, they did a testing where they dropped dummies out of the airplane to see how... Um, Going with what's that thing? What's that thing with the. Uh, let me Google it. A parachute, bloody. Anyway, so they wanted to see the effects on humans if they jump out of planes with parachutes. So they did a test where they dropped dummies with parachute out of planes. And they said that that could be what people misidentified as aliens. Well, this was years prior to Roswell, but then he said, it's possible that they mixed up the events, or was it after? I don't know, it didn't happen on the same time as Roswell, but then they said, no, people's brains are weird, they mixed up the two incidents and thought it happened together. But then the question on that was, everyone reported on little bodies of like small beings, and the dummies was full-sized human dummies, you know? This doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but what do I know? Anyway, the second theory is that there was a cover-up of aliens and UFOs. Now, this may sound ridiculous to people, but after this whole whistle-blowing business going on in America, you look at the case quite differently, because for years and years, anyone who said, listen, I saw a UFO, or this happened, they would be considered nutcases and cracky pots, you know? Now, um, now the US government and all these whistleblowers are coming forth and people are like, there's people who's been saying this for years. Not just civilians, like Air Force people and um, high ups pilots, respectable people have been coming forward for years. And we've been telling them that they are cracky pots. Not nice. Anyway, so this theory that it's a cover-up is based on tons of interviews that was done over the years. So one of the first things stated was that um, the rancher, you remember him, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. So apparently Brazil spoke to a radio personality called Frank Joyce and he did an interview. He basically said that the crash site was definitely UFO and that there was alien bodies on the scene. This is now the rancher saying this. But then the um, 
radio station confirmed that they did this interview, they recorded it, but they never aired it because they got tons of calls from the FCC and the US Senator Dennis Charest urging them not to reveal this footage. You know, what are you going to do if the like, FCC and everyone is climbing down your back? Not good. The military themselves released a press release saying they found a flying saucer just to recant the statements like a day later. The reports by locals and Brazil's family indicated that they were that, that Brazil was detained by the military after the crash happened, which would indicate that maybe he was threatened and forced to recant his statements. Mm -hmm. The military also apparently threatened the locals to keep quiet and this is corrobor corroborated this is corroborated by um, Colonel Hunter G. Penn's foster daughter so she said that her father told her that he was tasked with a information blackout with the focus on the alien bodies you know the little bodies he was authorized to use physical force and weapons if necessary just to get the job done just keep everyone in their place and quiet about all this alien business Colonel Blanchard he was the one who approved the first press release saying that they have a flying saucer he mysteriously went on leave just after that article was published you know? Later on, Lieutenant Colonel Joe Briley, he was a staff member of Blanchard, and he said that the so-called leave was actually a cover-up to coordinate a clean-up, you know, a operate, clean-up operation of the debris field, the crash site. Regarding the photo that was taken in General Ramsey's office, I'll attach it again, for in case you don't remember. After this, there was apparently a, a sealed statement that was written by Lieutenant Walter G. Hout. He was the Roswell Army Airfield's public information officer. Now, this sealed statement was only supposed to be opened after his death. In this, he claimed that the photo, that this photo, is actually a hoax and that the crashed materials was substituted by a weather balloon and then the photo was taken. Various reports of alien bodies with similar descriptions was given by people um, like uh, civilian people as well as military personnel. Now regarding the craft that was found, Sergeant Ines, um, an engineer, he always denied that there was a craft found and he said it was a weather balloon. But back in 20... but back in 2008 he admitted it was a spaceship. After all these years, I still don't know how that ship flew. There was no engine. Before I go, I'd like to know. You know, the truth is coming out. This happened in 2008. I don't remember it being in the news much. That is what I'm saying. When anyone comes forward, they are treated like a crackpot. Or they disappear. Or they are laughed at. Or they lose their jobs. You know? The existence of the craft and the alien bodies was confirmed by tons of people. And there were tons of military personnel who spoke about how they were tasked to... Um, what do you call it when you... Back engineer. What's the word? I'm forgetting words today. I don't know, but they were tasked to check out this craft business and to recreate the technology, which they could never do. You know, because we are people and we are stupid. I'm just saying. Anyway, with all of this alien business going on now, I kind of look at this case differently. You know, what do you think about all this business? Do you think there was a cover-up in Roswell? Now, with all this whistleblowers coming forward, I would like to know what happened really at Roswell. Give us the deeds. Because for years and years and years, you made people too afraid to come forward because, you th because they're going to look like foolish. But something is going on and I don't know what's the reason that you are now coming out with all this, yes, aliens are real, yes, UFOs are real business. What is your plans? What are you distracting us from? We don't care, okay? We just want better lives. The cost of living is high.
Just tell us everything, give us proof, and then go, go on with your business of creating a better world for us. I just want to go to the doctor without fearing back bankruptcy. That's all I want. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed my bullet journal setup. I did my, I'm going to show you here as well. My nails this month is pretty little daisies. Can you see it? Is it focusing? Focus. Pretty little daisies. And I thought I would match my bullet journal with that this month. My beautiful nails, as always, is done by Carla from Embellish. Thank you, Carla. You are talented. You are one talented lady. Anyway, let me know what you would like me to talk about next week. Is there any mysteries, true crime, conspiracy theories that you would like me to talk about? Comment below and um, we'll chat again next week. All right. By the time you are seeing it, I'm going to try and post this on Monday, 1st of August, which is my birthday. I'm just putting it out there. Whoop, whoop, today is my birthday. Not today as I'm filming, today as I'm posting and you are watching this. All right. Anyway, I'm rambling. Chat again later. Okay, bye bye.